Now we shall talk about a few cases of uveitis. For example, a 36-year-old man comes with complaints of red eye, pain and blurred vision. For details of this case, you can go to the site given below. He had ciliary flush. Note the ciliary flush which is also called a ciliary condition. It is always seen circumcorneal 360 degrees and the condition is more commonly violaceous in color and it always indicates that there is some disease going on in the cornea or the iris or the ciliary body. He had aqueous cells and flare. In this photo you can see num the arrows point to one the flare which is appearing a little greenish as the light is passing from the cornea on the left hand side to the lens which is on the right hand side and the aqueous which is normally empty is called as optically empty and the light should not normally be seen but because of the proteinaceous influx into the aqueous the light beam is now seen this is aqueous flare and in the flare you will find cells this is just like sitting in a dusty room with the window light falling through into the room where you can see the beam of light and in the beam of light you will see the dust particles Similarly, the aqueous flare with the aqueous cells. And examination of the fundus reveals multiple creamy, placoid, deep retinal lesions. In addition, there is one other finding. The left eye was thysical after a penetrating wound, a gunshot wound 19 years ago. So, the patient has panuriitis because we found ciliary flush, we found aqueous flare, aqueous cells and we also had findings in the retina. So, panuriitis and according to our, our earlier part A, we know all the causes, idiopathic infectious and immune related. Now, which one of these could be causing this disease? We have a very important clue. The anatomical diagnosis panuriitis, our clue is that there is a penetrating injury to the other eye. Then is this the sympathizing eye? Since it is a bilateral panuriitis, that is sympathetic ophthalmitis, the bilateral panuriitis and granulomitis variety, so straight away the diagnosis of sympathetic ophthalmitis was not made. Initially, infectious causes were ruled out and finally the diagnosis of sympathetic ophthalmitis was made and he was treated with Immunosuppressors and steroids. Second case, this is from the AO.org, INET magazine published by them. 10 years of the recurrent attacks of uveitis and visual loss in the Latino. 10 years, a long time, recurrent attacks of uveitis, which has led to visual loss in a dark skinned individual. Yes, this is the same photo that you saw in part A. KP nodules were found at the pupillary area and the SAPA nodules were found in stroma. This makes it granulomatous variety of uveitis. This is associated in history with bilateral shallow exudative retinal detachment and they were treated with systemic steroids and now he was on cyclosporin. Find this picture at this stage after 10 years of recurrent attacks should extensive pigmentary changes. And in the mid-periphery and periphery, small healed punched out lesions, the dalin fuchs nodules which were now healed. And you can see in the macula subretinal fibrosis which is more extensive in the left eye. Another arrow in your left eye is pointing out to depigmented areas. So what does this patient have? It's panuriitis, bilateral, granulomatous, chronic recurrence. So now we can narrow down, narrow down, and further narrow down the diagnosis. Shadow detachment with depigmentation and in a dark skin individual. This leads us to the diagnosis of VKH syndrome. And he was further treated with a fresh course of systemic steroids and uh, his uh, inflammation was attempted to control it in such this way. Let's take another case of anterior uveitis in a young man with chronic back pain. The list of causes for anterior uveitis, idiopathic, infectious and immune related. Which one does he have? He has chronic back pain. So, it points to more like HLA-B27 positive or a seronegative spondyloarthropathy group. Not juvenile rheumatoid arthritis because he's an adult. 
Recurrent anterior uveitis with spondylitis and arthritis, differential diagnosis, HLA B27 positive or zero negative spondyloarthropathies. This includes ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, Ritter syndrome, and inflammatory bowel disease. Ritter syndrome is classically seen in young adults male with the triad of non-specific uveitis, polyarthritis, conjunctivitis, and may have iritis. Ankylosing spondylitis, all you need to do is take an X-ray of the sacroiliac in the back and you will find that the patient has ankylosing spondylitis and the KTs in this case will be fine and not granulomatous. Bicep disease is the classical disease which presents as hypopionitis. It is associated with genital ulcers and oral ulcers. These three make up the classic triad. It can also have various other associated features. So those were the few differential diagnoses for anterior uveitis in a young adult male. For posterior uveitis, a patient who could present with floaters and blurring of vision, characteristic pattern of the disease sometimes helps us to make the diagnosis. Of course, the differential diagnosis is idiopathic infectious and immune related and in this the immune related variety has a specific group collagen vascular diseases and retinochoroidopathy which includes the white dot syndrome and serpiginous choroidopathy among infectious toxoplasmosis toxocariasis in children herpes group of viruses most commonly seen in immunosuppressed individuals tuberculosis and syphilis in anyone this is a photo, classical picture of punched out scar in the macular area. You can see that the retina is not very clearly seen. The choroid is just few vessels are seen. And the white area that you are seeing is actually the sclera skin being seen through. The edges well demarcated and they are pigmented. And this few scar is in the posterior fundus in the macular area. The diagnosis is fantasy, toxoplasmosis. This is CMV retinitis seen in a HIV positive individual. His CD4 count must have come really low. And you can see a granular type of uh, lesion. And you can also see that the vessels are having retinitis. This particular picture of the vessels having vasculitis around them, the yellowish lesion around them, is called as crossed branch angiitis. And CMV retinitis is one cause for that. And the rest of the yellowish white lesions that you are seeing, it is the indolent variety of senior retinitis. And the hemorrhages, which are also classically seen, are missing in this because this is an indolent variety. Otherwise, the classical feature of CMV retinitis is called as a pizza pie appearance because of the yellowishness, which reminds one of the cheese, and the hemorrhages of the ketchup. This is a slide which shows another characteristic pattern of uh, posterior uveitis. You can see the surfaceness or pattern in the scar tissue in the posterior fundus. On the right hand side is the fundus fluorescein angiogram of the same lesion. In certain areas it is scarred and in certain areas that is the superotemporal vessel, you can see that it is leaking and this is the area which is active. And it is in this particular way that the disease progresses from the center which heals to the periphery and grows like a brush fire pattern. And so this particular pattern leads us to the diagnosis of serpiginous choroidopathy. This comes under the group of retinochoroidopathies. That's coming to a differential diagnosis and then finally the diagnosis in uveitis to find the cause of the uveitis. We need to be a bit like Sherlock Holmes and do the master detective game. First, finding clues in the history, taking a detailed history, doing a systemic examination and taking a systemic history, looking at the ocular findings, seeing the granulomatous or not, and the typical pattern of lesions, and finally narrowing to a group of differential diagnosis. Further, we need to take help of our uh, physician, dermatology, and other uh, specialist friends, and go to the lab with a whole lot of steps in spite of all this, and then finally nail down the diagnosis. Thank you.